Hi everyone, welcome to the next video on the Fusion to FreeCAD series. First I want to thank everyone who liked, subbed and commented on my other videos, especially the comments telling me that FreeCAD is garbage. I wouldn't have been able to come to that realisation without your help. So thank you. Anyway, let's get stuck into it. As you probably guessed from the thumbnail, we're going to quickly model a companion cube from Portal. It's not just a representation of how out of date my pop culture references are, it's simple enough to be fast, but has enough detail for us to try out some new techniques. I'm not trying to show you the best way to model a companion cube, I'm trying to show you as many different ways you could model the cube in a 10-ish minute video. I've got a pretty good idea of what they look like, but if I go from memory it's definitely not going to be exactly right. So let's import an image for us to use as a reference. In a new file, select the image workbench, click this button to create a new image on a plane in the 3D viewer. Select the image file, select the plane that you want to put it on, and there it is. If your image is a bit dark like mine is, that's because the plane that it's actually attached to has a default grey colour. You can select the image in the tree, right click and select appearance or hit Ctrl D and that will bring up the appearance toolbox. Then you can just change the colour to white to give you the actual image colour. You can also bring up this appearance menu for basically anything else in the tree to change its colour, transparency, material and a bunch of other things. You can also see the image properties in the data and view tabs. If you need to reposition or scale the image you can do that here along with a bunch of other properties. I want the companion cube to be 120 by 120 millimeters. If the edges of the part went all the way to the edges of this image, I could just scale them here. I deliberately picked an image where this isn't the case just so I can show you the scale tool. I can select the image plane by clicking on it or selecting it in the tree and then click the scale button. Select two points on the image that you know the exact distance between. I'm going to go the edges of the inside of the cube and then in this box, type the distance that they are apart, which is 100 millimeters. Then hit enter. Now the image is correctly scaled to use as a reference. Now we have our reference in place, let's start modeling. Switch to the part design workbench and let's create a sketch on the XY plane. Now we have a sketch in place, we can actually see that the image isn't centered. So I can go back and adjust these values to get it closer to center. I normally never use grid snap, but let's turn it on for this example. I'll draw a rectangle over the origin. Now, I know that it's exactly 100 by 100 millimeters because it's snapped to the grid in the right places. So now I'm going to let you in on a little secret and the FreeCAD police will definitely come after me for saying it, but contrary to every other FreeCAD video, forum post, tutorial or anything, you don't need to do anything more to this sketch. I don't need to add constraints. I could just close it and keep on modeling. It is absolutely best practice to fully constrain sketches, both in FreeCAD and in Fusion, but if you're just trying to throw something together quickly, this sketch is absolutely fine. Now that I've said all of that, I am actually going to constrain this sketch. I'll make sure that the rectangle remains centered by using the symmetry tool on these diagonal points, then make the width and height equal, and then set one of the lengths to 100 millimeters. Now we'll close the sketch, select pad, and to ensure that the box we make is centered around the origin, we can change the pad type from dimension to two dimensions. Now enter 50 millimeters for both dimensions and finish the pad. If we unhide the origin, we can see that the cube is centered. Why does this matter? Well, it doesn't really matter, but it's going to make something we do a bit later on a lot easier. I'll hide the origin again, and let's go to the next bit. To put some details on the side of the box, let's create a new sketch on the XY plane. Now I could have made this sketch directly on a face on the side of the cube just like I did in the first video, but just like not fully constraining sketches, that's technically a FreeCAD no-no. Since this isn't going to be a model I'm expecting to go back and change later, it'd be fine if I sketched on a face, but this is a chance to show you some other FreeCAD bits. Anyway, our sketch is stuck in the middle of the cube, which is Pretty annoying to sketch on, but you can click D 
this button to toggle between full and selection view. Basically, it just hides everything that's in front of the thing that you're working on. Leaving the sketch in the middle also allows us to keep the reference image in view while we're sketching. I'll draw a circle in the center of the sketch. Let's give it a size. There's a radius constraint here, or you can click the little arrow on its bottom right, and you can switch to a diameter constraint. I'll just use radius for this. It looks close enough to 25 millimeters, so let's make it that. Now close the sketch. To put this sketch where it actually needs to go, we can select the sketch, look in the data tab, open attachment property, and then the position property, and change Z to 50 millimeters. The sketch will now be sitting on the face of the cube, but isn't attached to the cube. Now we can pocket the sketch, two millimeters into the cube should do it, and click OK. I'm going to make another sketch in the same way to add the little slots in the cube's face. Yeah, I could have included this in the last sketch, but just be patient, you'll see why I'm doing it this way in a moment. Draw four rectangles around the origin, each starting from a point on the previous rectangle, then select the first and last points and add a coincident constraint. Select one long edge on each rectangle and make them equal, and then do the same with short edges. Set the length of a rectangle to 45 millimeters, and then the width of a rectangle to two millimeters. The last thing we need to do is center it. So let's select these two points and then the origin and then add a symmetry constraint. For everyone who pitched a fit in the comments in the last video about FreeCAD not being able to handle intersecting geometry, this bit's for you. If we close our pad and try and pocket it, it's not going to work. You can see it just disappears and if you try and complete it, you get a weird error message that probably doesn't make any sense to you. Open the sketch again, select the four inner edges of the rectangles, then click this button to switch them into construction geometry. This is exactly the same as reference geometry in Fusion 360, and it's ignored by the solver when you're doing anything outside the sketch workbench. Close the sketch again. Now if we pocket the sketch, it works fine. Let's make it two millimeters just like the circle and click OK. Now, time for the reason why I did this with two sketches instead of just one. See these extra faces here? It's probably one of the first things that anyone notices when they come to FreeCAD from Fusion. They're stupid, they're ugly, they're annoying, and they can break fillets and chamfers in complex models. To get rid of them, select the pocket, and in the data tab, change refine from false to true. Depending on your setup, this might not automatically update. If this is the case, just hit F5 and it'll update. Rather than doing this all the time, you can just go to the preferences menu, go to part design, and check these three boxes. This means everything from now on will have refine turned on. This can make things happen a bit slower, so you can turn it on and off as you need it. Let's get back to the model. I'm not gonna do this five more times. It's time to introduce you to the multi-transform tool. Select both of the pockets we just created and open the multi-transform tool. This tool lets you combine a bunch of patterns or arrays into a single operation. First right click in this box, select polar pattern, Change this to four copies, then in the axis dropdown, choose select reference. Click on the Y axis line, then click OK. Then right click in the box again, polar pattern, four copies, select reference, and then select the Z axis. Click OK, and then click OK at the top of the tool window. Now all of the faces should have both pockets. Our companion cube has some little, I guess you'd call them bumpers on the corners. We could model them directly onto the cube, but you already know how to do that, so we're going to do something a bit different. Let's make another body. I'll rename it Corner Bumper, and then create a sketch on the XY plane. So we can get the correct placement for the bumper, let's switch to Construction Geometry. When you do this, all of your sketch tools go blue so you know that you're in construction mode. Let's draw a rectangle starting from the origin, make both sides equal, and set one side to be 60mm long. Then switch out of construction mode and draw a second rectangle from the top right corner of this one. Make the sides equal again and set one side length to 45 millimeters. Your sketch lines should all be green at this point. That tells us the sketch is fully constrained. Close it and you'll see that we have a sketch buried inside the box again. So let's offset the sketch, but this time make it 60 millimeters. Make it solid by padding the sketch 45 millimeters, 
and checking the reverse checkbox to make it go backwards into the box. To get the arc on the inside, make another sketch, just on the XY plane again, draw a circle. Let's constrain it to 40 millimeter radius, close the sketch, and then select pocket. Check reversed again to get the pocket to come toward the cube, and let's just make it 60 millimeters. To get the other two sides, you could just repeat this twice with two more sketches, or we could just use the multi-transform tool again and add two polar patterns with an angle of 90 degrees, one on the base Y axis and one on the base Z axis. If one of them isn't showing up, it might be going the wrong way, so check reverse and see what happens. The bumper looks fine from the outside, but this won't fit over the cube. To remove material and make it fit on the cube, we could draw sketches and then do pockets. This time we're going to use a subtractive primitive. I'll select a cube from the list. I'll make it the same size as the original cube, 100 by 100 by 100 millimeters. Set it on the XY axis and then offset it negative 50 millimeters in each direction. When that's done, click OK and all that's left is to chamfer the edges. I don't want to select every single edge around the shape, so I can just select these three faces and then go to the chamfer tool. Let's manually keep increasing the chamfer width to nine, 10 millimeters and uh-oh, we've encountered one of FreeCAD's little quirks. FreeCAD uses the Open Cascade modeling kernel. One of the most common complaints about Open Cascade is its current inability to handle full width chamfers or fillets. I have some tricks and workarounds that I'll put in another video, but right now let's just stick with a nine millimeter chamfer and call it done. If you're going to print this or machine it, you don't need to model eight copies of the bumper. You just make one and you print it eight times. But I know you still wanna see your model with all the bumpers in the right places. It'd be really silly to model seven more of them and even just making seven more copies wouldn't be a great idea. So let's look at the link tool. Links only exist in FreeCAD 0.19, so if you're using 0.18, you need to upgrade to get this functionality. To create a link, select the object you wanna copy, then click the link button. Now you have a reference copy of the original. It's almost like a component in Fusion. You can move it around any way you want, but anything else you change on the original will also affect the linked versions. I don't wanna do this seven times and then place seven different linked objects, so let's make a link array. In the current version of FreeCAD, to do this, we need to venture off into the dark world of the draft workbench. There are only two reasons that I ever go to the draft workbench. One is to make text and the other is for link arrays. Anyway, go to the draft workbench and to do this, make sure the bumper is selected, go to the array button, click the arrow to change the array type and select polar. I'll say that again, polar and not circular. They're wildly different and you'll have a bad time if you try and do this with a circular array. In the array toolbox, set the coordinates to zero, zero, and zero, change the number of copies to four, and make sure that link array is checked. Then click okay. Now there are four bumpers. We really want eight, so I'll toggle off this draft grid because this is the only place that you can do that and it's annoying. Then go back to the part design workbench and with the array selected, create a link. Right click on the new link, select transform and rotate it around to the other side. At any time you change anything on the original bumper, all of these will update. I'll quickly make all the bumpers that go in the center. It's basically identical to making the corner bumper, so I won't bore you with the details. Now we have a pretty big mess of bodies and arrays and other things in the tree, so let's do a quick tidy up. I'll create a folder, call it bumper, and then drag all of the bumper bodies and arrays and everything else into it. For the last part of the model, we need to create the little heart badges. So let's start with a new body, and just to be different, instead of making a new sketch on the XY plane and offsetting it, we'll create a datum plane. This is the other correct way to create a sketch in FreeCAD. So let's unhide the origin of this body, select the XY plane, and then click the datum plane button. Go to the Z offset, and as we increase it, you can see the yellow plane moving. Bring it all the way up to 48 millimeters, which will be on the surface of the cube inside the circular cutout. Now click OK to complete the datum plane. With the datum plane selected, create a new sketch. I'll make a circle. I'll make the radius one millimeter smaller than the circular cutout, which is going to be 24 millimeters. Then I'll close the sketch 
pad it to four millimeters and then put a two millimeter fillet around the edge. Now for something a little bit more fun, let's draw the heart. I've offset another sketch so it sits on the front of the badge. I'll select the spline tool and draw one side of the heart. Once all the points are down, right click to finish the spline. You can drag your control points around to get the shape that you want. And instead of drawing the other half, you can just select the spline, select the center line and click the mirror button. You might have to dig around a little bit to find this toolbar if you have a small screen. Now remember this spline is a copy. It's not linked to the original. So if you go back and tweak the control points for the original spline, it doesn't update, but you can just delete the copy and create a new one. With that done, I'll pocket the heart into the badge, make some link arrays and position them around the cube, then throw it all in a folder as well. The cube looks pretty boring all grey, so let's fix that by selecting a body and going to the appearance menu, either right clicking and going appearance or control D. I'll make the cube dark grey and the bumpers and heart badges light grey. But what about the hearts? I'm glad you asked. You can select the last operation within a body, in this case it's the pocket for the heart, right click on it and select set colours. Then pick the face you want to colour and set the colour. I'll do the same thing for the pockets on the face of the cube. Now the cube looks the part, but what about exporting it for printing? If you select a body in the tree and hit Ctrl E, you'll get an export dialog. Pick whatever file type you want, I'll make an STL file and save it. The default mesh export is pretty coarse. If you want a higher quality mesh or you just want more control over the settings, you can use the Mesh Design Workbench. Select the part you want to make a mesh copy of, and then click the Tessellate Shape button. The default settings also create a pretty coarse mesh, so I normally just change the surface deviation to 0.01 millimeters. Click OK, and then you have a mesh copy of the body. Use Ctrl E to export this mesh, and it's ready for your slicing software. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more FreeCAD content, and don't forget to contribute or donate to FreeCAD if you can. The links are in the description below. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.